Well, hello everybody. Welcome back to the Bison Workshop. I'm Bob. And today I just wanted to kind of go over a couple guns and what I was doing. And uh, show some upgrades that I've done for some of my past uh, builds, like this gauntlet uh, stock build. Um, and I made a cheek rest just like I did for the Avenger. Well, I'll show you that. When I made the cheek rest for that one. Uh, so, I just basically did the same thing with the gauntlet, except this one's a bigger, it's, it was wider than this one. And I had to do that because the wood, let's put this back down, this is my, these are my snipers. <laughs> these are the ones that reach out and touch the one. <laughs> And um, it came out a little wavy across it because of the way the printer printed it. So I wanted to hide it because I sanded it down. It really wasn't doing that good a job getting rid of them without doing a lot of filing. I wasn't doing a lot of filing. So I thought, well, why don't I try to use some camouflage? So I found this material that's got the cotton back on it so that when I put it on my cheek it's got at least some kind of padding on it too. So I just cut me a piece the size of a piece of cardboard that I had cut out to go where I wanted to go because here on the bottom it says uh, Umarex Gauntlet 25 stocked by Bison on it on both sides. And then I've got a screw here on this side and then on the opposite corner because it's in between 25 and bison or stock by bison. So this one's forward, this one's rear. So it still holds on just fine. I just drilled a hole and put a little screw in it. And, and then I took this contact cement after I got the piece cut, this piece here, and I coated, I put masking tape across here. Masking tape across here because I didn't want no glue down here on this part because I wanted this part to show. So <clears throat> this here is what I used on my shoe soles about four or five years ago, <laughs> maybe four years ago. And, uh, well, actually, it might be five years ago, and it's still holding up. So if it can't hold that little thin material down, then something's wrong. <laughs> and even if it frays up a little bit, it's going to give it that rugged, used look. So rabble is good. So don't let nobody tell you rabble's bad. And um, then I went and put, I had a water hose, one of those water hoses that starts out at 25 feet and when you put water to it it's got surgical hose inside of it that expands and makes it 75 foot long uh, hose well it developed a hole and those hoses you can't fix them so i just went ahead and got another one but i took it apart and got all the uh, coating off of it This stuff right here. And this is going to make nice wire covering. This is going to make nice uh, rod covering like that right there. And it's, it's accordion action. So when this goes in, this squishes a little more. And if this goes up forward this way, this will squish quite a bit. So it doesn't matter underneath here. I don't think you can see it. Of course, it's never going to go forward anyway. That's just freaking just to say it works. It really doesn't work because it's where I need it to be anyway. And it's all the way back. So I really didn't even need an adjustable one. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. 
but I wanted it to be adjustable because that's the option people want. So this here is extended out to about the same length as my Avenger. And the reason I done this was because my wood stopped right here. Well, my cheek usually landed right here. So, or it landed right here on the edge. So I decided to make this piece to extend that another inch, maybe inch and a half, inch and a quarter, uh, to bring that back so my cheek would actually be sitting on it. Or I could have moved the scope forward, but this here gave me an opportunity to do something different and show off <laughs> at the same time. So what we got going on now is the barrel band up front here. Let me bring you up over here in front. So we got this barrel band and it just slides on. And I'm gonna tell you, this gauntlet man, it is one badass freaking gun. <laughs> so this is what it looks like halfway done. It's not done yet. I'll show you what I mean by that. Uh, it started off like this, and that's what it looks like underneath there. So now what I need to do is get a really, 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 maybe even add another really there, sharp exacto knife like this one. The problem is this one's not sharp, and I can't find my other blades. I'm going to have to look for my other blades and find me a new one so that I can cut out all these circles and then I want to cut a straight line across here so that when you put your bipod on it and it clamps on there you don't want it hitting that all the time so we want to get it up there to about halfway and just give that kind of a border I really don't need this on here but I don't really want to 3d print another one uh, unless somebody was wanting to buy it, but I've got the big bottle. I don't have the original bottle, so mine's not going to be like yours. So I'm going to cut, I glued, put that contact cement on the back side of this, and then I painted the outside of this with the uh, contact cement. And now I'm waiting for this to completely settle, settle down or settle and be formed real good and tightly bond that way i can do some cutting on it um, i've got a rubber band around here to pull everything tight so that it stays good and tight in them corners because that's where it's critical because if this has got just a little bit of stretch on it you know and it's hard not to stretch because you're used to it you have to let this relax into that hole and because it's trying to stick right here at the same time you're trying to get it down in there sometimes it's hard to keep from getting a stress on it so we put a rubber band around it to combat that problem now once it's dried we can take the rubber band off and it should be on tightly bonded and then we can take a razor in there and go around all them holes and cut this round part out on all those and leave you with the camouflage band that will slide right on there just like the other one or did before we slide it on there and it's just it's just press fit on there we're not trying to move anything we're just trying to make it look good and support the barrel so in fact, I think I'm going to leave the rubber band on there, but I'm going to get a black one to put on there. And I'll make sure it's nice and straight around there when it goes on. And that will actually give it a shock absorber. <clears throat> so we're multitasking on this gauntlet. So I'm going to cut these out. Once this, once this dries, 
and I think it takes like two hours before it's ready to go so you might not see this till tomorrow so we might not do anything till tomorrow so but there you have that one now let's see what else is going on the bison's bench So the other day we was doing some shooting with this bad boy and we did some testing and trying to figure out what makes this thing shoot really good and I think I've got it nailed down. Uh, I did change the clip somewhat. These are the first try. This was number one try. Now this one had a long valley in it that took from here to here for the pellet to go into the groove. The problem with it being so far away from that center hole is the fact that uh, it just had too far to travel to not make a mistake. So when the pellet went down in there, it was uh, kept going sideways because it had too, too much of a chance to get tangled up. You know, twisted sideways a little bit, and then a, a hit here makes it re redirect in another direction. And it always ended up with the pellet sideways in there. So that one wasn't working. If you didn't do it just right, it was going to go sideways on you every time. So we fixed that problem by making it so that it was angled, we thought. Yes, it made it easier and less torture on your fingers because of the sharp corners and we were going for a profile too so basically this is what we ended up with real close to the hole so that your pellet's almost to the barrel anyway once it starts so it's, it don't have very far to roll so then I tried to go and uh change it on both sides and it really didn't change the way this one operated so it was basically the same thing all right so then i decided to go with this so So we just kind of shaped the outside of it a little bit to bring it closer. So see, you don't have very far to go before the pellet's already in its slot. So then we got a, a point on the bottom here, but you have to put that in yourself. Every gun's different, <laughs> I'm telling you. There's a slight problem with these freaking guns. They have a slight misalignment from other guns so this year well you know what i might be able to reproduce that uh i might be able to do a hole on the bottom so it'll come like that but i think we got these ready to go um these are the shot trays for the the single shot tray for the AEA element and listen nice crisp you hear that ball in there crisp yeah it fits real nice it comes off the 3d printer like that now you can go the extra mile on yours if you want to I did on mine uh, as you can see, it's got a like a washboard surface to it because of all the different layers. So I take a file and file all the sides until it looks even all the way across and there ain't no lines of shiny lines. So I just file all sides and here and then I just sand a little bit just to make it look like that.
it looks like it is a solid piece of plastic for what it is this is one solid piece so there's the shot tray fork for the element now let's can let's move up here to the uh technical part i have tried a barrel band that restricts the movement of both the shroud and the tank tank really ain't going to be moving it's too solid, it's steel, you know, it's married to the uh, breech. It, it's pretty much a solid piece now, all the way up. The only weak link is the barrel. So I have found that this barrel likes to be on its own. It's an independent barrel. <laughs> um, so instead of having the wrap around and then this pushing up on your shroud i decided when i shot it and it wasn't grouping very good i decided that all right let's try free floating so this barrel band has two set screws one on each side of the top just like the original barrel band that I had, well, for all AEA, they all have these same same ones for the AEA Challenger and now for this one, and the barrel trains. Don't forget to go buy your Bison barrel train at uh, Bison Air Rifles and Parts dot com. <laughs> uh, this will soon be up there too. Uh, I am printing. Two right now for AEA Pete over at uh, AEA Northeast. Um, so it says AEA uh, Element, and then on the other side it's got Bison, and it's got two set screws on the bottom. And yes, I'm using metal or steel set screws simply because i don't want this thing turning on me i can i can handle a little little scratch in my uh tank i'm acceptable with that because i don't i know my own strength and i know what's too tight and what's not tight enough so then i've got these two set screws here that are used to center it to the two down here so that this barrel moves both ways equally if you see here I'll show you put you right here in front of the action how about that now this barrel moves that way and that way the same so it's perfectly centered it's also just barely touching the bottom. The very bottom is barely touching. So, and you can tell that because of how easy it is to go side to side. Because I'm just doing that and it's moving it. This barrel likes to be floated. This, uh, this element is awesome, guys. I'm telling you, you want one of these. Trust me. Uh, this has got the regulated tank on it. I'll show you what the unregulated tank looks like. This is the unregulated tank that goes on there, and I bet you this fits it. Yep. No gauge. It'll have one if you have it on your gun. <laughs> but he sent that with this gun, and I thought that's pretty cool. This is the unregulated. And you can see the difference in the size. Damn, I need another cap. Pete, hey, hint, hint. <laughs> uh, but man, I'm telling you. I was shooting this bad boy today. I can't wait till tomorrow. I'm going to be a busy man tomorrow. Uh, 
this here is going to be and my table keeps changing every time I, I keep forgetting that thing rocks against that I got my tread aluminum underneath there over the top of my sink to kind of give me a bench to work on and I keep hitting it and turning it I'm used to leaning against something I need to break that habit don't I but anyway we're going to eliminate this golf club and I might just make me a putter out of that bad boy. That would make a nice putter. <laughs> that's the only thing I don't like about this. Well, two things I don't like about it. And that's the safety is reversed. Can't have that. That almost caused me a problem the other day. Uh, because I thought it was in safe. Uh, I had it back in safe. And I accidentally hit that trigger right here. I almost, uh, I almost shot my window. And that would have pissed me off. Guys, you got to do something about that safety. That's not right. People are used to something. You can't change it like that when it comes to safety. Uh, I know you want your own designs and stuff, and, and I applaud you for wanting that, but you got to stick with tradition because... Who do you think's teaching the younger generation the tradition? The old timers, the ones who know what they're doing. And when you get used to something, you want to stick with it. You don't reverse it and say, oh, damn. Sorry, a guy died. Maybe we should have changed that. A little, a little too late then. We hope that never comes to that. But you got to stick with the two things here. Stop putting that gauge right here. Stop changing your safety. And this one here is just a preference thing for me. Uh, that just looks like a golf club. <laughs> I mean, look how easy it is to pop off. Yeah. I, and it's folding. Yeah, so. But I'm getting ready to change that. Uh, tomorrow I should have my stock in and my 357. So we're going to be doing a reshoot with the 357. But isn't this a pretty little gun? I, I like this. This thing is pretty. I ain't none too uh, shabby myself. Look at this sexy man shooting this sexy gun. By God. <laughs> Quit it, guys. Stop throwing your panties at me. Now this is what you call gun porn y'all want to see some more gun porn <laughs> i ain't got no more gun porn not yet I'm, I'm working on it tomorrow i'll have some more gun porn uh i don't know if y'all got a good enough look at the uh, gauntlet but we are done with the gauntlet finally Oh, and that element, I'm telling you. Now, these are my sniper rifles. They are long for, they're, they're long by design. Uh, it was a long gun to begin with, and you had to extend, extend it so you can put a, a moderator on it. So, uh, it just makes sense to make this the sniper, and it is a sniper. I can reach out there, <laughs> and uh, I got a light on it that shines red, that's pretty daggone bright too, LED, uh, sporting the uh, Bison's um, traditional Sea Life Penty Westlake, uh, this one happens to be a Penty that's on my Avenger. This is my Avenger 25 cal, and uh, she's done, man, and she's looking pretty sweet. I'm still debating on whether I want to do some uh, burning on this one, but if I do that, then I'm going to take away from the Challenger, and we want the Challenger to be on its own, so... Uh, this one's also got the extra clip holder on the side. 
and I'll tell you how quick this is. Let's get it off a of fire right now. Now you see that? I'm used to that and I noticed that. If I'd have seen that backwards before on that other one, I would have thought that it was safe. But it's not. So forward is fire, backward is safe. Remember that guys. But when I'm out of a clip, I can do click, click, pull that out, reach up here, pull this one out, put that one in it, lay that one down, load it back up, and I'm ready to snipe at that going uh, pesty bird. <laughs> so, um, this is a pretty tough setup I've got here. I'm proud of it. This one's got a Westlake... Uh, sunshade on it so this is the adapter for my gauntlet now this adapter is not going to work for your gauntlet unless let's bring let's bring sexy gauntlet back up here and show you what we got going on we're just talking shop guys uh, Y'all can exit out if you want or whatever, but uh, what I did, I took this uh, cap off, and I'm not going to, uh, I'll just bring you over here and let you look. What I did was took this out, drilled it, and tapped it for quarter uh, half by 20 and then I went on a 3d printer and made this piece so basically what that does is goes into your suppressor and adapts the suppressor for so you can go into a three female And yes, it's plastic, and yes, it's delicate, so you got to be careful threading this stuff on. That's why I don't spend a lot of time selling these things, because they work for me just fine. I never have a problem with them. But you start selling them to the public, and you got people out there that don't know their own strength, they don't know to align things up, and it makes life hard for me. And I just soon stay away from it do it for myself and be done with it so uh, but we're waiting on the challenger to show up so we can do that shoot and get this thing back on it where it's supposed to be this pretty sexy thing there's some more gun porn, man. You guys quit that. Quit that damn stuff. It's just gun porn. Yep. I like my gun porn. Uh, I guess you could say that I'm a, a gun porn addict. <laughs> Is there a meeting I need to go to? Uh, I'd like to find me a female gun porn addict. <laughs> anyway, don't forget to like, share, comment, subscribe. Got any questions, let me know. Don't forget to check out bisonairriflesandparts.com. See what we've got uploaded. Uh, we got a few things up there for sale. And uh, I just added some uh, barrel shrouds for the uh, T1 and the T2 Cattleman rifle. So, anyway, you guys have a good one. Later.